Disney has been notorious for bashing their fans as a dirty method of damage control, for not liking the woke slop that they keep dishing out for us all, and making their productions flop hard. What has recently come out of them is, however, maybe even more ridiculous. They are now trying to tell us that the universally repulsive wokeness in every recent Lucasfilm garbage they create is not actually Kathleen Kennedy's fault, because she's just being convinced by others. I guess didn't want to say, she's just following orders. As if she hadn't been hired for her well-known political activism and leftist bias. In this article they say, she's not actually a woke warrior, and in a way I would agree. She is more of a woke minion. Then they say, after Daisy Ridley was cast as the lead in Star Wars sequel trilogy and other female actresses like Rosario Dawson and Natasha Liu Bordizo played prominent roles on Disney+, some fans claimed that Kennedy was pushing a political agenda. This later led to the Lucasfilm boss being described by that sect as woke. Right. It must have been these few casting choices that led to it, not the decade-long woke slop with consistently race and gender swapped characters in every single remake and reboot and the deconstruction of every white male protagonist. The popular adult animated series South Park even released a special that featured Kennedy in a satirical manner as the face of the woke community at Disney, claiming that she only makes decisions to pander to everyone. Actually, South Park nailed it perfectly with that episode. Except when they say Disney is trying to pander to everyone, since they only pander to the woke minority in their audience while basically spitting in everyone else's face. The upcoming Disney Plus series, The Acolyte, has also been subject to this same criticism due to it featuring a female writer, director, and showrunner, Leslie Headland, and putting much of it's a focus on female characters. No, not so much because of any of these reasons, although Headland's person is definitely questionable, but rather because these DEI-based casting and personnel choices always seem to result in causing serious damage to both the plot and the overall quality of a production. According to Matthew Baloney via his The Town podcast, Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy isn't accurately portrayed by some fans as being the face of diversity at Disney. Well, she is presenting herself that way, so how is she supposed to be portrayed? Some go as far as to call Kennedy woke, but Baloney revealed that these claims aren't accurate. He specifically stated that she's not known as the woke warrior at the company, and frequently even has to be convinced to include a lot of the diverse elements. Yeah, I can imagine how they're begging her to make it more woke, but she keeps arguing with them and wanting to make it more straight white male-centered. Baloney also pointed out that there's still never been a female director of a Star Wars movie, and that he personally believes she has not gone overboard on the diversity stuff. I'm glad he believes that. But millions of fans seem to think otherwise, so maybe it's time they started listening to them instead of just their own BS mantra. As previously mentioned, some fans believe that the modern state of Star Wars has been dominated by female actors and executives just for the sake of diversity. Yeah, and it's not just females but also POC in way higher proportions than the target audience would warrant. Take the sequel trilogy for example, yes, Daisy Ridley headlined the three films that came out between 2015 and 2019. However, male actors such as Oscar Isaac and John Boyega also had major roles, as did Adam Driver. Yes, their major role was mostly to be humiliated and beat by overpowered girl bosses. It is also important to note that the two directors who brought the sequels to life, J.J. Abrams and Ryan Johnson, are both men. There have been plenty of shows though, but of course let's not mention those. When looking at the Star Wars shows that have been released on Disney+, Plus, the same can be said. Rosario Dawson was the focus of the Ahsoka series and Natasha Liu Bordizzo had a major role as Sabine Wren. But other projects such as The Mandalorian, Andor, The Book of Boba Fett, and Obi-Wan Kenobi have all featured male headliners. Yeah, and almost all of these male characters ended up getting deconstruction, as per usual. A lot of fans are also pointing out how The Acolyte will be directed and written by Leslie Headland, claiming that she only got the role because Kathleen Kennedy is striving for diversity. Well, either that or she knows certain things that they don't want to get out to the public. Aside from Obi-Wan Kenobi, which was directed by Deborah Chow, no other Star Wars project has been wholly directed and or written by a female, making these claims completely baseless. What? How does this change the fact that Kathleen had a major role in the making of a whole bunch of woke shows and movies, or the fact that they are clearly hiring writers and actors based on how many boxes they check? In short, it appears as though Kathleen Kennedy doesn't put as much focus on hiring females for the sake of diversity as much as some fans want to believe. Yeah, I don't think anyone wants to believe it, but unfortunately that's how it is. What's even harder to believe is that they actually want us to think that Kathleen Kennedy is some kind of an underdog who's suffering under the oppression of her woke bosses. Especially since she makes sure to reassure us in every interview just how much she's into pushing these agendas. 
All right, that's about it for today. If you like this video, don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and put your thoughts down below. You should also check out my book about some major lies we're being told about the world, which you can find in the description. See you all next time.